Okay, fine. Uh, okay, Ian, yep, all the best, and uh, 732 you, and I'm not going to book anything at the moment. <laughs> okay, I know, okay, hi, uh, G4UEM, I'll uh, bring you in in a second. Uh, pass it over to Phil first, G4GHZ, G3EFX. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Remote SDR version 2. Now I've covered web-based SDR solutions on this channel before, such as Open Web RX. But what's special about Remote SDR version 2 is that it also allows you to transmit via your browser. Now obviously, you do need to have a transmit capable SDR, such as the HackRF1 or the Adam Pluto. A remote SDR also supports RTL SDR for reception. Narrowband FM, wideband FM, AM and SSB can be received by remote SDR, but only narrowband FM and SSB can be transmitted. Also, there is currently no AM transmission support. Now also included is the ability to encode a CTCSS tone, so you can work through repeaters. DTMF tones can also be sent, which is quite useful if you're controlling gateways such as IRLP, Echo Link, and All Star. Now, Remote SDR version 2 runs on Orange Pi, specifically the Ambient operating system for the Orange Pi 1 Plus and the Debian operating system for the Orange Pi 0 2. Now, don't confuse this hardware with the Raspberry Pi range, as the Orange Pis are a different breed altogether. Now here's a diagram showing a typical setup of remote SDR running on an Orange Pi 1 Plus and an Adam Pluto. The Adam Pluto is connected to the Orange Pi via a USB cable and the Orange Pi 1 Plus is connected to an Ethernet switch. Now the Orange Pi runs Apache web server which remote SDR sits on top of. Using a computer connected to the same network, you simply type in the IP address of the Orange Pi into your browser, such as Google Chrome, where you will then be able to take control of it. Now, another configuration type would be to have two Orange Pies running on the same network, one for receive and one for transmit. This doesn't mean you need to have two web browsers open because within remote SDR, you can actually specify the IP address of the RX and TX Orange Pies. Now, here's another example of how remote SDR could be used. Here we have two hack RF1s, each connected to their own Orange Pi. One will be receiving the IF from an LMB, so around 734 megahertz, and the other hack RF will be transmitting on 2.4 gigahertz. Now this makes for a perfect installation for working the geostationary satellite QO100 from a single web browser on a device on your local network. You can even use your mobile phone or tablet instead of a computer if required. So let's take a look at the Orange Pi Zero 2. Here you can see it's about half the size of a Raspberry Pi, but don't let that fool you as these are just as powerful, if not more than a Raspberry Pi 4. Now the little wire coming off there is actually the Wi-Fi antenna, but in this demonstration, I will only be using the ethernet connection. Now the three main connections that we will be using will firstly be the USB-C connection for supplying power to the Orange Pi. We'll then use a normal USB socket to connect the add-on Pluto to the Orange Pi. And then we'll use the Ethernet port, which will be used to connect the Orange Pi to the router. Underneath, you'll also see the SD card slot. Let's take a look at how we install remote SDR onto the SD card. So first we want to navigate to the remote SDR version 2 GitHub page where we'll be able to download a pre-built image that we can write to the SD card. Now the author also offers the source code and installation instructions if you wish to compile this yourself. But from what I've been told to build it yourself would actually take around three hours to compile depending on what operating system you're using. Now there are two pre-built images that the author has provided. There is one for the Orange Pi 1 Plus and then there is an image for the Orange Pi 02. Now, as I'm using the Orange Pi 02, which I purchased from AliExpress for around £20, I will download the appropriate image. Now, I will leave a link in the description below to where you can buy the Orange Pi 02s and also this GitHub page. And once downloaded, we need to uncompress this archive file. 
Now, please note that once this is unarchived, the image file is actually around 29 gigabytes. So you will need an SD card of at least 32 gigabytes to be able to write this image to it. Now, the software which I'll be using to write the image to the SD card will be Win32 Disk Imager, which is a free download from the internet. Now, start the Disk Imager software and then make sure the drive letter is set to your SD card, which should already be in your SD card reader. Select the image file that we've just uncompressed and then click write. Now for me, this took around 30 minutes to write this image file to the SD card. So once it's finished, remove the SD card from your computer and then pop it into the orange pie. At this point, you can connect the ethernet connection, the power connection and your SDR receiver to the orange pie. Currently, the Pluto, HackRF and RTL SDRs are supported, but in my case, I'll be using the Pluto as mentioned before. With everything powered on, we now need to find the IP address your router has assigned to the Orange Pi. The easiest way to do this is to log into your router and take a look at the connected wired devices. You should see an entry for OPI-Z2, assuming you're using the same as me, the Orange Pi 02. Next to this entry should be the IP address your router has assigned to it. Now make a note of this IP address and then enter this into your browser. I'm using Chrome as I found this to be the most reliable. Now if everything is working correctly, you should be presented with this landing page, a nice animated penguin called in CQ. And before we load into the remote SDR screen, there is one important setting you need to make if you intend on using this solution to transmit. Now if you're not going to transmit, then you can most likely skip this next section. So we need to make a small change to one of the Chrome flags. So to do this, simply type Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags into the URL entry box. Now look for the section titled Insecure Origins Treated as Secure. Now once found, you need to enter the IP address of the Orange Pi and make sure it's enabled. Now just to explain why this is needed is that for the browser to gain access to your microphone, the server should normally be secure. So just starting with HTTPS colon. But as we're using this on our local area network and we don't want to mess around with SSL certificates, you can simply enter the Orange Pi's IP address here. So back to the landing page and we have two options that we can select. I'd recommend first clicking on tools and then click on list USB devices. This should then show us on the right side, a list of connected SDRs to your Orange Pi. Now, it may not make sense what it writes in the window, but if nothing shows, then you know there is a problem with your SDR or you've not connected it correctly. Now, let's go back to the main landing page and now we're ready to launch remote SDR. The first thing we're going to do is make sure we have the correct device selected. Now, if not shown automatically, click the parameters button and choose between Pluto or HackRF stroke RTL SDR. The IP address for the RX SDR should already be populated. Now, if you're transmitting to, then you'll need to enter the IP address into the TX SDR box. Once entered, close the parameter window by clicking the little X button. Now, if all is well, the indicator on the top row titled SDR RX on should be green. At this point, you can click the RX audio button to start listening. Now, if you're not receiving any stations, it may be because you need to adjust the RX gain. To do this, click the RX gains button on the top left and slowly drag the gain slider to the right to bring up the gain while keeping an eye on the signals to make sure you're not overdriving the receiver. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, hi there, Phil, G4GHZ, G0CAG. Uh, yes, we uh, spoke with Martin yesterday, uh, GRS. Um, uh, we've been looking for our French friend Hervé on 80 metres, but I think the conditions weren't there and people complaining how bad HF was and um, on 80. I did hear uh, some European... So now you have received working, it's time to start playing and learning what all the controls do. Now most of them are quite obvious as they're all labelled. I won't go through all of these as it'll spoil the fun for you. As I'm using the Adam Pluto, I'm also able to transmit. So using a preset relay repeater setting that I programmed for my local FM repeater, let's make a test to see if we can hear ourselves. Testing one, two. 
Testing. Testing one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Testing one, two. Testing. Now in that brief test, I was using the Pluto to transmit. Now as the Pluto is quite low power, I actually used a broadband amplifier that I got cheap from Amazon just to boost my signal slightly. And my audio was cutting out and that's most likely down to me overdriving the audio, which in turn knocks out the CTCSS tone. So another cool feature of this solution is that VNC server is already installed and running on the Orange Pi. Now using VNC viewer on a machine on the same network, we're able to look at the Orange Pi desktop. Now in turn, this allows us to edit files and set up the Wi-Fi connection. Now I haven't tested this solution over Wi-Fi, but I would imagine you need a good strong signal for the RX and TX to work correctly. Now if you've tried this yourself, let me know down in the comments section below. Now if we navigate to the HTML folder, we see a file called configuration.tx.js. Now be careful when editing these files, but within this file, you'll be able to add your own relays, repeaters, or memory channels, or whatever you want to call them. That's where the receive frequency, transmit frequency, and a CTC assessment mode. These become selectable dropdowns when you're in the front end of remote SDR. So there we go, guys. That's an overview of remote SDR version two. Now, if you've used this yourself running on the Orange Pi, let me know down in the comments below uh, of how you got on with it and your experiences. I do know that this is used quite often for working QA100 because it does have the split ability to be able to transmit on one frequency and receive on another. And it also has QA100 presets. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.